Ah, a nice relaxing Sunday afternoon of Doom. Dude, what are you doing? You need to record the first map of the Master Levels. It's Monday tomorrow. The Master Levels? What the hell are you talking about? I'd never agree to play that shit. Dear God, what have I done? Welcome to week one of Master Levels Mondays, and we're playing map one, Attack. And while I go through the first few stages of this map, it's time to lay down some ground rules for how this series is gonna go. So first of all, we're playing in Crispy Doom. And that is because it automatically constructs the Master Levels into, I think it's PlayStation Doom order. So by playing in Crispy Doom, I don't have to worry about anything with regards to putting the maps in their correct slots and what order they're going to be in. It's as close to an agreed upon official order for them, I think, as is possible. The PlayStation Doom order. I think it's that anyway. Uh, second of all, as you can quite clearly hear, I am going to use Peter Lawrence, aka Megasphere's MIDI pack because it rocks, basically. Well, it doesn't like rock, it's a hip-hop vibe, but you know what I mean. It's really, really good. And if I didn't use it, we would just be listening to the stock Doom 2 tracks yet again. So not only is it really, really good in its own right, but it's also better than us hearing those Doom 2 tracks again. It's funny, for most people uh, playing the Master Levels back in the day, they would have just heard D-Runnin over and over and over again, because most of the maps just got played in slot 1. But some of them require slot 7 and slot 15 and so on. Uh, Crispy Doom sorts all of that out. Um, but Attack is almost always played as map 1 anyway, because it's alphabetically first, I think. So most people are familiar with this in the first slot. And as you can see from the MIDI pack, there's also a couple of custom graphics included just for fun. Doom f Episode 4's Sky, I think. And you'll see in Crispy Doom, so I'm playing it a bit differently to on uh, previous Crispy Doom playthroughs on this channel. I've uncapped the frame rate because it seems like the latest version of Crispy Doom 5.12, which came out only about a month ago, <coughs> excuse me, it's an embarrassing voice crack, um, it can handle playing uh, keyboard only with the uncapped frame rate now. One of the reasons I didn't used to use an uncapped frame rate is that keyboard only controls felt a bit weird, like you're running around in sand or with ice physics or something, um, but then when you capped the frame rate it felt fine. Well, Crispy Doom, just like PR Boom, now can totally handle uncapped frame rates and keyboard controls and it feels sweet as. So I'm doing that. And the other thing you'll notice is that Crispy Doom, being the excellent tasteful source port that it is, has included uh, map stats above the status bar, just like everyone loves to do in PR Boom and DSDA. So, of course, same developer, Fabian, who works on PR Boom I'm, or DSDA Doom and Crispy Doom, I'm pretty sure he works on them both. Uh, so, it makes sense that he would include that. But yeah, I love Crispy Doom, it's such a great source port. I only swapped to PR Boom for the extra features it has. And I will mostly stick with Power Boom because it just has that little bit extra features um, stuff that I like. But I'm really happy to be back in Crispy Doom. And also, as you can see, there's an option in Crispy Doom to randomly mirror uh, monster corpses when they die. And given how much everyone seemed to love that Doom 2 mirrored maps video I made, I turned it on because why not? You know, why not? Uh, and then the final thing to say about the way I'm playing this I know some people are going to be mega angry, but I'm not bothering with the proper aspect ratio because, and this is just a little quirk of mine, we all have our little quirks, we all have our little strange things that we like to do when we're playing Doom. They're all a bit different, no one's the same, and mine is that I really, really like the status bar to fill the entire bottom of the screen. And the only way to do that in Crispy Doom is to play with aspect ratio not forced, to be 4-3. But the thing is, I actually do not mind the way it stretches out the sprites. I think they look fine. I think the weapon graphics look cool this way. I think some of the monster sprites even look a little bit cooler stretched out a bit. So it doesn't bother me. Um, unless I get an absolute torrent of hate, um, I'm just going to play with aspect ratio not forced. And things stretched out. Because I like the status bar of all things. 
I fully admit that I'm the weirdo in this case, but whatever. It's my series, damn it. I'm playing it the way I like. Anyway. The master levels themselves. I think we finally got everything out of the way. Oh, and of course, there'll be a link to Peter's uh, midi pack in the description. Go download it and go support him. Go look at his band camp, all that sort of stuff. He makes really great Doom music and music in general. So I'm not just using it and saying that it's good. Like, I also just want to give him a proper shout out because this is a great midi pack and you're going to hear it as we go. There are some really cool tunes in here. Some that fit the levels really well. I really love the one for Black Tower, for example. Black Tower being pretty much the only other map in the master levels that I am familiar with besides this one, Attack. So yes, let's talk about Attack. It is by Tim Wiltz, I'm pretty sure. So he's ended up working for id Software for a very long time, all the way up until Doom 2016, in fact. And um, my aim is terrible, I'm afraid. It's probably because I'm just so busy talking about everything but what I'm doing. Um, and... Yeah, Tim Willits' maps are pretty good. He is a pretty good map designer, I have to say. I mean, he has some really strange ones in his back catalogue from before this sort of era. But his good ones are good, and this is one of his better ones. He's at his best, I think, when he's making these kind of, like, tech-based style maps. Really does sort of, uh, you know, shine through in terms of how good he'd become by the time he was helping to make maps for Quake and Quake 2 and that kind of thing. He really was in his element. Alright, and this always happens to me when I play this map. I know this is the secret here, and this might be the final kills, hopefully. That's a bizarre secret. Taking that teleporter is just counts as a secret. I'm not sure why that was the case, but whatever. It's relatively easy to find, and these should be the final kills here. I've just absolutely destroyed attack. It's a pretty good first map, to be honest. Like, I know it was never intended that way. Like, okay, we're missing a kill somewhere. Brilliant. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure there ever really was an intended order to the master levels, but attack just very easily, aha, perfect, became the uh, de facto first map. And um, it's pretty good for it, it works out, it's a decent first map. So yeah, nothing special, but a respectable, decent little tech base. And um, master levels are off to a reasonably good start, to be perfectly honest. Nothing special or amazing, like I say, but decent and so the final ground rules for the series i will be playing semi-blind where possible so this is a rare video where i know the map uh, the only other one that i know is black tower and like i've played a couple of others like canyon and uh i forget their names now but there'll be a couple that i remember as we go but if i truly don't know it at all i'm playing them blind so expect me to possibly die i only died once throughout all of tnt it'll be more than that than this i'm pretty sure we'll see uh, and then the other thing is, I'm going to keep up the grading system, of course, but I'm going to allow myself thumbs to the side this time. So for those unaware, at the end of every map, I'm just going to quickly dish out based just how, on a, how I feel, basically, uh, whether I think the map is a thumbs up, thumbs down, or now also a thumbs to the side. And that's just simply do the good points outweigh the bad or not, or are they even? And for attack, I'm going to say thumbs up. It's decent. You know, there's nothing bad about it. It's just a simple tech-based map. It's pretty decent for a map one as well. You know, the architecture and everything is pretty good for its time. The fights are just sort of, you know, fun enough. There's nothing wrong with them. You just bash through it like you saw me do. So, master levels, they're off to a solid start. Nothing amazing. Let's see how it goes. I know that we're still in Tim Willits's world next week for Canyon, I think, is map two. And, yeah, I mean, I'm familiar with the starting area, and it's, yeah, 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 we're already starting to get into crap town, I think, but we'll see, we'll see. Hopefully Peter's middies uh, carry us through a bit and make it a bit more interesting to play than otherwise would be. Although, having said that, interesting is definitely a word you can apply to the master levels. There are some experimental weird ones in here. You thought TNT was experimental and weird? Wait till you see some of these master levels. Anyway, hope you enjoy. I hope all the ground rules are clear. Of course, I'll clarify anything in the comments. And yeah, welcome to Master Levels Mondays. We've got 20 more to go.